So welcome back to my Inktober flip throughs and um, we've got days 15 to 21 today. Um, first of all, let me apologise if there's a sound interference. I'm fil filming in my conservatory because that's where there's the best light. But also it's really rainy in the UK today and obviously the conservatory is also the noisiest room to be in when it's raining. So I don't know how much of that will pick up on the video. So if it's distracting, um, I apologise for that. If it's too bad, I might even scrap this video and refilm it tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. OK, so here we go. This was day 15 was for Armadillo. Um, just a little short story on this one. I know quite a few of you commented on my previous videos that you liked the stories behind the pictures. So. That's a good thing because I've got quite a few stories for you today. Um, just a simple one for the armadillo. I was really tempted to draw a woodlouse for this day because my granddad used to call woodlice armadillos, which I just think is really sweet. Um, but when I was looking for photos to draw, it's not very easy to find a nice photo of a woodlouse. So I just ended up sticking with the literal armadillo, but part of me wishes I'd I'd actually drawn a woodlouse uh, for my granddad. <laughs> okay, and then for fowl, we've got this is actually a turkey chick. Um, he's kind of at the stage where he's still sort of yellow and fluffy, but he's just got some of his darker feathers coming in here. Um, when I was young, my grandparents on the other side of my, my family um, had a farm and when I was, oh I don't know, probably about six or seven maybe, I'm not sure how old I was, um, they had some turkeys and as a young child I had no concept that the turkeys were there to be fed up and fattened and killed for Christmas and um, that didn't even enter my head. To me, the farm was like my own little zoo. Um, didn't really understand the realities of, of what it was all about. But what I did know was that these little turkeys had been hatched from their eggs in an incubator and they'd never met their mum. So I took it upon myself to be their mum <laughs> and I tried to teach them to fly. Of course, I also didn't know that turkeys don't fly. Um, but I did it in a very gentle way. I didn't drop them from a great height. I just did it from low level uh, feeders. And then when I thought they were getting a little bit more graceful with their <laughs> with the descent back to the ground, I gradually moved them to taller feeding troughs. Um, but yeah, that's a little insight into my, into my mind. I was the mother to all these little turkey chicks, which later when they grew up were eaten. Uh, Quite a sad story really <laughs> and then for salty we've got this old sailor um, perhaps you like familiar with the term about an old sea dog and I remember once on holiday with my parents again when I was I was quite young although I'm, I might have been a teenager I'm not too sure and we saw in a shop window there was a, a painting of a character kind of like this who my mum referred to as a sea salt and then that that just kind of stuck because she meant to say sea dog but it just came out as sea salt um, so when I saw salty that was that was one of the things that um, that popped to my mind um, it was either that or I was going to do a big pile of a big pile of salty snacks uh, but that would have been too tempting for me to eat them instead of drawing them so there we go we've got a an old sea dog, or as my mum would say, a sea salt. And then scrape. Uh, this one is a, a wood plane. Um, recently, I ended up having to shave a little bit of wood off the top of my bathroom door to get it to shut properly. And this was, well, actually, this wasn't the tool that I used to do it, but it was one of the tools that I'd brought in from my garage as a potential for doing the job and I ended up using one of the other tools but that wasn't so interesting to draw so I decided that I'd uh, that I'd draw this one quite interesting quite interesting shape to draw the wood plane 
and then we've got a ponytail. Now this is actually me. Does it count as a self-portrait when it's the back of your head? I suppose it does. Um, seeing, seeing this view of myself, which obviously you don't usually see yourself from that angle, reminded me of some years ago, I used to have a classic car and one of my friends commented to me that she'd seen me driving in a certain part of town and she said, I knew it was you. She said, I recognised your ponytail and your earrings. And I, you know, under normal circumstances, it might seem a little bit of an odd way to recognise a friend. But when you think about the fact that I was driving around in a car that was 50 years old, I mean, she didn't recognise the car. She recognised my ponytail. So I don't know. I don't think my ponytail is particularly distinctive, but there you go. Apparently it is. And then this one. Wow. I have some explaining to do for this one. Bluff. Why on earth would I draw a teapot for the word bluff? My first thought for bluff was I don't want to draw a poker related drawing. And then I thought of bluff as in like a cliff, like a geological, um, what would you call it, a feature. And I was looking at photos of cliffs and steep slopes and looking at definitions of what's the difference between a bluff and an actual cliff. And then I remembered something that had happened when I was at school. Um, are you familiar with the old TV programme, Call My Bluff? It's, uh, you have two, two teams, I think it was usually three people on each team, and they would have a word that they had to give a definition for. And two of the definitions would be fake and one would be real. And the other team had to identify which was the real definition for this obscure word. Anyway, when I was at school, for whatever reason, uh, one of our teachers got us to to play this this game. And I was on the team that I'm ashamed to say we got it wrong and the word was teapot. But the reason we got it wrong <laughs> was because the other team had actually pronounced it tiapo, as if it was a foreign word, French maybe, without the, the T being pronounced at the end of pot. Yes, so tiapo, and they came up with some elaborate explanation of what a tiapo was. And it was obviously very believable. And I remember afterwards we complained because we didn't think it was fair that they were allowed to change the pronunciation of the word because that's what had fooled us. But at the end of the day, I don't remember what their fancy fake definition was, but I do remember how humiliated we were on our team because we would got tricked, we got it wrong when it was something as basic as a teapot. So, so yes, with all the people around the world doing Inktober, I think it's fairly safe to assume that I'm probably the only person who's drawn a teapot today on this day, uh, or should I say a teapo? <laughs> okay, and then our last one for this video for today, bad dog. And I don't have a story for him. This was just a photo that I found online, um, a rather guilty looking dog, but I would like to know what his story is. You know, he does look like he's been up to mischief and he's just been called a bad dog or he's been told that he's naughty and just that that sheepish, guilty look that the dogs have uh, when they've been told off. So there you go. That's, uh, that's where we're up to. And um, now I need to think about what I'm going to do for heist for tomorrow. That's a tricky one. I'm not too sure. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas, but we'll see okay so i hope you enjoyed that little flip through and my strange background stories for some of these pictures um and i will see you next week